Good afternoon and welcome to the Rotary Club of Madison. I'm George Hidalgo, club president, and thank you for joining us today. So we start off with speaking about philanthropy, and I'd like to talk about the start of our annual Community Grants Fund drive campaign. So again, it's not going to be the annual fund this year. It's actually going to be the Community Grants Fund drive. And you will all receive a letter in the mail later this week from campaign chair Ellsworth Brown. So we have a $110,000 goal and hope to get at least 95% participation in this year's drive. Ellsworth will join us next week to talk more about the campaign. And we know it's a difficult time for many of our members during the pandemic, but our community needs our support this year more than ever. And it's important that remember what's going on is with this pandemic is that uh, everybody's being affected differently. You have some winners, some losers, even on the professional side. So, for example, uh, bankers are, are doing well. Uh, restaurants and gyms and uh, music uh, facilities uh, obviously are not doing well, nonprofits. So um, some businesses, online businesses, obviously doing well. So it's interesting how this pandemic has affected uh, everybody differently. But it's an opportunity for us to really focus on giving back to the community, which is why we're calling it the Community Grants Fund Drive Campaign, because everything goes to our community in Madison. With that, Let's go to opening music and let's direct our attention to Casey Oker, who will play This Land is Your Land. Casey? Thank you very much, Casey. And on to committee reports, awards, and announcements. So uh, beginning today, we have started a pre-meeting PowerPoint presentation that includes announcements similar to the PowerPoint presentation we had during our in-person luncheons. So in future weeks, starting around 11.50 a.m., you can click on the yellow box and watch the announcement section prior to the meeting if you are interested. <laughs> Okay, Mary Pat Williams serves on our Community Projects Committee, and she will expand on our October Fest campaign, an additional way we can serve our community. Mary Pat? Thank you, President George, and thank you, fellow Rotarians, for letting me remind you of a couple of great events. First, as George mentioned, it's very warm today, but it is October, which means it's Socktober in partnering with Porchlight in collection of socks for people who need to keep warm this winter. As you know, there's an event tonight where you can drop off socks, but if that's not convenient for you, the next time you find yourself on your favorite shopping website, search adult socks, and if you're so inclined, perhaps even smart wool socks, place an order, and when your box of socks gets delivered to your door, you can drop them off at Porchlight's main location on North Brooks or the Commercial Kitchen on Fair Road or Grace Episcopal Church. Thank you for participating because we all know if your feet aren't warm, you can't get warm. Next, I just wanted to mention our November event. In November, we are again partnering with the Goodman Community Center in their annual Thanksgiving dinner that they provide to thousands in our communities. Last year, as a new Rotarian, was the first time I was able to volunteer and I was amazed at the volume of food and the scope of the operation. 
Yesterday, Jane sent out an email that offers two dates for us to volunteer as a group, the Thursday and Friday before Thanksgiving. That's November 19th and 20th. If those slots aren't convenient for you, please feel free to tool around the Goodman website and search for other options and read their COVID precautions and requirements. I wanted to thank Jenny Jeffries, our committee group head, and please check out Jenny on LinkedIn today and Martha Sullivan and Jane for helping us coordinate all of these ways for us to stay connected in our community. Be safe, be well, thank you. Thank you, Mary Pat. <clears throat> and I know uh, many of us may not know someone who uh, is homeless or has been homeless. And uh, as I thought about the Oktoberfest, uh, or the Socktober, excuse me, I was thinking about uh, a fellow Rotarian who had been homeless in, in, their, in their past. And so it made me uh, think about just for, you know, thinking about how we can go ahead and support uh, the homeless. So we're not asking for a whole lot when you think about it, right? So I actually went through my sock drawer, and I think most of us have sock drawers. And so just go through and look at the socks that are in the, way in the back that you haven't used for quite a while. So here's, a, here's some of the socks that I'm donating. Okay, so bright blue socks, as you know, uh, I'm a business executive, and also I've been in the military before. So this is a little bit too radical for me. Maybe it's good for Jason Illstrip, but for me, no. So I'm donating these socks. And then I've got another pair of socks. Uh, these are brown. I kind of prefer black and blue, but brown, not my color. So I'm going to donate those. And then I was going through the sock drawer and found a whole bunch of socks here that uh, I haven't used for quite a while. And these are uh, obviously winter socks, thermal socks that I had in my drawer. And I hadn't used them for a while, primarily because I used to downhill ski and uh, several years ago, downhill skiing in Snow Basin, Utah, I uh, screwed up my uh, uh, ACL, MCL pretty bad. So based on that, I haven't skied for a while, and there's lots of things to do in life. So probably skiing is not going to be in the rest of my life. So if you think about these thermal socks, they'll come in handy. For, uh, so, and the other thing is I was uh, shopping with my wife on, uh, no, actually she had given me a list the honey-do list on Saturday, and I went to Costco, and as I was walking by where they have the socks, I thought this nice uh, pair of socks that says, weatherproof vintage outdoor crew socks, only for $9.99. So if you think about it, it took me about seven minutes to put it back together that uh, we'll be able to donate uh, to the homeless that really will come in handy in this uh, Socktoberfest. So please, just a little bit of time, uh, altogether, it's taking me about seven minutes to put something that will definitely help people in need. So I appreciate uh, the group uh, you know, coming forward with that project. I think it's a great one. So next, we have a pop-up event. Uh, if you're looking for a way to connect with other members, consider attending tonight's pop-up event at Wisconsin uh, Brewery Company. Uh, Haley Salsa, Miller, and Charles McLyman is invited to join them starting at 4.30 p.m. And following uh, up on the announcement about Mary Pat, you can consider bringing uh, some new socks uh, or just some socks and having today's event be a blow your socks off event. So right off the bat, it sounds like it's going to be a fun time. Uh, so go through your sock drawer, pull out any new socks or socks that you don't wear, no holes in them, okay? Uh, so also bring your chair and connect uh, with your rotary friends. So the kind of guidelines we follow for this group event. You can also join our private Facebook uh, group to see future pop-up events as they occur. So contact the Rotary office if you have questions on how to find the private Facebook group so you can join. Linda Baldwin chairs our special events fellowship group and she has an announcement. It's a beautiful day in the woods on the west side of Madison today, and I'm asking you to join us for a beautiful day in the Walk for a Walk in the Woods at APT on October 17th. This is Linda Baldwin O'Hearn. It's gonna be a great day, and it's going to be a wonderful time for you to learn about the woods, about how they inspire the arts, 
about APT, uh, thoughts and poems and pieces of literature done by APT artists and guests. It'll be a great deal of fun. Looks like it'll be October 17th. More information on the website. Sign up. Thanks. Thanks, Linda. So there's a link on last Friday's uh, Rotary News where you can sign up for tickets for APT on either October 17th or the 18th or you can contact the Rotary office for those details. So now on to birthdays. We have birthdays to celebrate with a bit of humor or wisdom that complements Rotary's mission. We also encourage members to make an age appropriate gift to the Rotary, Madison Rotary Foundation, rounded up to $100 for our Club Synergy Scholarship Fund. October 4th, Amanda White. Then she's picture here, uh, the picture was taken on her birthday with her son Gregory. October 5th, uh, Mike Crane. October 6th, Stephen Elkey. Also October 6th, Jerry Ring. October 7th, Dave Dads. October 8th, PJ Blitz. October 9th, Maggie Porter Kratz. October 10th, Ralph Hawley, who shares a quote from Lawrence Durrell, to increase your hold, relax your grip. Also October 10th, Jane Wagenke. So thanks to our celebrants for their contributions to the Madison Rotary Foundation. Please join me in wishing them a happy birthday. Pat Gutenberg. Thank you very much. So on to uh, members in the news. My featured member in the news this week is Amanda White. Amanda has been a member of our Rotary Club since 2017 and serves on our program committee. She holds a bachelor's degree in communications arts and public relations from the University of Northern Iowa and is the owner of Amanda White Consulting, which she has been working to advance nonprofits and small businesses in Madison for over 15 years. She says she enjoys fund development because a nonprofit's financial success makes possible our inspiring ideas on how to improve our communities and the lives of our neighbors. Now, Amanda is a consultant for the Madison Public Market Project and was quoted in a Capital Times article last week. The project's uh, first five vendors were announced, and Amanda says, that the market will be home to 30 permanent mem members, vendors, excuse me, and include two to four anchor tenants. She says the process to choose tenants will begin next year, so we look forward to hearing more about that project. Again, this is a great example of how we have many Rotarians uh, that are uh, members of our club here, uh, the Madison Club, uh, and we definitely play a major role in the community. So thank you very much, Amanda. Now, other members in the news, in case you want to highlight any, and I know that this was looped uh, before the meeting, so some of you might have been aware of that, but let me go through. Uh, Paul Feinlund was quoted about the Idea Fest that is being held via virtual sessions through October 28th, and there is no cost to attend, and that was uh, both the Capital Times 923 and the Wisconsin State Journal 925. Paul Hoffman was quoted in an article titled, Monono Banks, uh, no, Monono Bank reinvents its rotunda with a new cafe, and that's the Capital Times 918. Mike May recently joined Boardman and Clark Law Firm. Catherine Smith was quoted in an article titled, With New Live Recital Series, Madison Opera Keeps Moving, and that's the Capital uh, Times of 919. Masu Akhtar was included in an interview about a Pardon Citizens Assistance Program. He helped create, and that's uh, was WKOW on 10-1. Uh, Jeannie Cullen Schultz and George Cullen have been selected to serve as fifth generation co-presidents of J.P. Cullen. So congratulations, Jeannie. And Donna Moreland has recently been named Deputy Secretary 
uh, of the Department of Safety and Professional Service, and that's the Wisconsin State Journal 10-3. Again, uh, fantastic uh, that our members are making such a significant difference in the community. Um, there may be more. If there are, please notify the Rotary Office so we can uh, just re remind ourselves of how significant a role many of our uh, fellow Rotarians play in the community. So with that, let me go on to the main program. So our speaker today is Chris McIntyre, who was named Deputy Athletic Director of, the UW, of UW Madison in 2017. He oversees the day-to-day -day operations of the department's uh, student athlete recruitment, business development, human resources, and strategic planning. Prior to joining the UW Madison Athletic Department, he spent nearly four years as co-founder and managing partner of one of the most successful mass participation events, built as the nation's largest women's fitness event. Now, Chris was a consensus All-American offensive tackle and not one trophy finalist for the Badgers in 1999. He captained Wisconsin's back-to-back -back Big Ten and Rose Bowl champions in 1998 and 1999 and started 50 straight games during his college career. He was the first round draft choice of the Seattle Seahawks in 2000 and played in Seattle for three seasons. Today, Chris will share the economic model of college athletics at UW-Madison while highlighting the benefits it creates. So we look forward to your presentation, Chris, and we have made a contribution to Rotary International Public Plus Fund as a way to say thanks for speaking to us today. Now, Chris's presentation has been pre-recorded, so he will be available immediately following our meeting for Q&A. So you can use a separate Zoom link in your email from this morning to join that live Q&A. And uh, we'll begin immediately, immediately following the meeting at approximately 12.35 p.m. Chris? First, I'd like to start by saying thank you to the Rotary Club of Madison for inviting me to speak today, specifically to Regina Milner and to Jason Barron for your help and your support. I'd also like to thank the members of the Rotary Club of Madison who have been and continue to be generous supporters of our program. Without your continued support, the stories with which I'm about to share with you wouldn't be possible. Each year, the University of Wisconsin-Madison Division of Intercollegiate Athletics makes possible the opportunity for over 800 student athletes to obtain a world-class education while competing on the largest scale. The lifelong benefit of this experience is significant not only to these individuals, but to our community. Today, I'm excited to highlight a few stories of Badgers that have taken full advantage of this opportunity, and I'll share a little bit about the economic model providing this opportunity. So my first question to you is, what do you think of when you think of the Badgers? Likely, it's images like this, JJ and Russell, Frank Kaminsky and James White. It's images of moments like these that we think fondly of and recall back to when we were sitting in Camp Randall or watching on TV big moments on a big stage. But what do you think of when you think of college athletics? Sadly, the narrative is much different today. There's an emphasis on name, image, and likeness and paying the players, exploitation of student athletes, coaches' salaries, compliance scandals, and lavish facilities. This narrative of hoisting the trophies and winning championships has been around for a long time. And we could have done a better job emphasizing all the areas of support and the difference that we are able to make. A long time ago, I was the captain of two Rose Bowls. And here you can see the other three captains of the 98 team, the 99 Rose Bowls. If you would have asked me after captaining those two teams about my experience, I would have told you this. I was the captain of the Rose Bowl, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. At that moment in time, I wasn't able to understand or appreciate the benefit of the world-class education that I had received, the degree that I received. I also wouldn't have recognized the impact that the student athlete experience had given to me. So what is this all about? Is it all about hosting trophies? That's just the beginning. It's about access to a world-class education, access to an opportunity, it's about the ability to grow and to, to develop young people. It's about preparation to enter a world after competition. It's this idea that gets lost in the current narrative of college athletics 
and it gets lost in the imagery in the archives of hoisting championship trophies. So let me share with you areas in which our athletes get support and are able to take advantage of opportunities. First and foremost, our goal is to graduate our student athletes. We have a team of academic support specialists whose sole mission is to do so. Badgers Give Back is a program that was created to connect our student athletes and our staff with our communities. Our career and leadership team work on skills such as resume building and job career placement. We've built a team of clinical and sports psychologists with a focus on mental health. We were the first athletic department in the country to establish a director of diversity and inclusion, now inclusion and engagement. Performance nutrition is a priority of ours. Our strength and conditioning staff use cutting edge technologies to train our athletes. Our sports medicine team provides first rate healthcare to our student athletes. And our W Club connects our athletes with our alumni network around the country. But the opportunity that our student athletes have to grow isn't limited to those support services. It's centered around the relationship they have with their coaches. Coach Alvarez has always placed an emphasis on the relationship that the coaches have with their student athletes and the fact that they care. This mentoring of young people that provides an impact and creates the opportunity for student athletes to go beyond what they thought was possible. It doesn't take place only in the preparation for competition on a big stage. It takes place in nuanced conversations on and off the field, in the meeting rooms and in the locker room. Our student athletes have an impressive cumulative GPA of 3.246 in 84 diverse majors. 380 student athletes were named to the Dean's List last year. 95% of graduates last year had a positive career outcome. 69%, 88 of them gainfully employed full time. 18% continued on to advanced degrees and 8% sought part-time volunteer military service. 96% of our students of color had positive career outcomes. 77% full-time, 12% sought advanced degrees, and 8% part-time volunteer or military. 100% of our Wisconsin residents had a positive career outcome. So where do the financial resources come from to make these support services and access to these coaches possible? As you'll see in our 2021 budget, the vast majority of our revenues come from the sport of football. Almost $50 million come from conference distributions and the NC2A in the postseason. Ticket sales account for almost $35 million. Our partnerships with organizations and companies like Under Armour and Learfield account for almost $17 million. Generous support by our fans and our donors account for almost $23 million. $11 million in licensing and merchandise, almost $3 million in sodas and hot dogs sold in our venues, and about $4 million in events, concerts held in our venues. The vast majority of that revenue is driven by filling the stadium, Camp Randall, on seven Saturdays a year. Much has been written about our financial challenges, and even with the potential of a modified season, it calls attention to the reality of our financial model. Football underwrites the cost of providing opportunity to over 800 young people. And while we're doing our best to manage these shortfalls of revenue by relying on unrestricted gifts that have been held at the foundation, we launched the Badger Legacy Campaign, leveraging strategic partnerships and also making tough decisions around staffing and hiring. Our priority has been to preserve this opportunity for over 800 young people in 23 sports to take advantage of this. The level of support that we provide is our priority. It's our intention to preserve it. So when their playing days are over, where do these athletes go? 63% of our athletes settle in the upper Midwest. The balance are scattered across the country or around the globe. Two great examples of this are Jake Wood, founder of Team Rubicon and author of the To Be Released Shortly, Once a Warrior. Jake was the backup on the football team to someone who you probably do recall, the one and only Joe Thomas. Jake took advantage of his opportunity in the classroom and as part of our team under Coach Alvarez's leadership to obtain a degree, Jake went on to serve in the fight against terrorism in Afghanistan with the Marine Corps. He went on to found Team Rubicon, an organization that has received national praise. Alana Friedman is another name that you may not know from her days on the ice with our women's hockey program, but what you will be interested in knowing is she's the one that was the catalyst behind the You Can Play campaign in her playing days here. A campaign to support LGBTQ 
student athletes and their ability to have opportunity to play at a high level. She went on from Wisconsin to get her JD from St. Louis School of Law. She's currently working on her PhD at the University of Texas, and she's specializing in legal sociology, American policing, and race and ethnicity. Closer to home, almost 3,000 of our W Club members live here in the state of Wisconsin. You'll be surprised to learn that 1,000 of them reside in Dane County. Two more examples I'd like to share with you are Calvin Barrett and Mike Jackson. Calvin was recruited from San Diego, California in the year 2000. While his playing career didn't pan out like he had hoped, he majored in sociology and began a career in law enforcement. He ended up being the first African-American police officer in Sun Prairie. He's now a full-time instructor at Madison College, and he started a successful consulting business. Mike Jackson recently returned to the University of Wisconsin Athletic Department on our senior leadership team. He was born and raised in Milwaukee, a two-sport athlete, track, and men's basketball, and his career ended with an injury. He made the most of his student experience here at the University of Wisconsin. He was president of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. He was the Dane County Boys and Girls Club Volunteer of the Year in 2004. He was the Dean of Students Office of Diversity Education Specialist and the co-chair of the University Diversity Plan. Mike went on to work for Northwest Mutual and became the first African American in its company history to serve as the Chief Marketing and Develop Development Officer at the regional leadership level. And while the stories that I've shared so far have been limited to those athletes that made the most of their student careers, let's go back to that group of four 98 football captains. Donnell Thompson, who you may recall, is an alum of the Madison West High School. Donnell is now the Director of National Accounts at Direct Supply in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Bob Adamoff, originally from Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, has recently come back to Madison and serves as the Vice President of Sales of Commercial Effectiveness at Exact Sciences. And Cecil Martin, originally from Chicago, is passionate about working with young people and has achieved celebrity status in London after leveraging his NFL Europe career into a, one of a broadcaster. And while the four of us did enjoy lifting the Rose Bowl trophy above our head, what makes me most proud about that experience is to share with you that three of the four of us were first generation students to a four year institution like this. It was the support given to me by our program and the leadership provided to me by my coach that caused me to believe that I was capable of doing more than I ever thought imagined. For me and for Bobby and for Cecil, access to this opportunity of higher education was made possible only because of football, because of athletics. And as I close, the most exciting thing about our work are the examples that keep presenting themselves. Dakota Dixon grew up in a crime-ridden Miami neighborhood. He was raised by a single mother. He was exposed to frequent examples of domestic abuse. He was placed into foster care after living in a house with no working refrigerator. It's well documented that his father was a drug addict for much of Dakota's young life until he died of a heart attack. Dakota is one of the most impressive people I've ever met. He's a graduate of this university and he's a leader. He's making the most of an NFL career today, but his impact in the NFL will be dwarfed by his impact to the world once he's done with his athletic career. Another great example is Taylor Page Stewart. She's from Calabasas, California, and was a pitcher on a women's softball team. Upon graduation, she stayed here in Madison as a lab technician. She's since accepted a full scholarship to attend UW School of Medicine and Public Health, and she's quoted as being inspired to seek a cure for cancer. It's examples like Dakota and Taylor that cause us to be more excited than ever about our future. Thanks for allowing me to share a few stories with you that tend to get lost in the current narrative of college athletics, stories that I and my team are passionate about. We've got the privilege and the responsibility to work with young people on a day-to-day -day basis, young people that have and continue to do amazing things in this world. Until next time, thank you again, and on Wisconsin.